Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to Three Peas in a Pod, episode 224. Welcome back. We, we made it. No, we can't say that. Barely. We, we, we made, made it. it. We, we just made didn't it. make it on time. We made right. it back. Yes. Yeah. So for everyone out there who's uh, been paying attention, it's been a minute since we had an episode. I think it's been, I think, three or four weeks three or without four weeks. episodes. How have you survived without us? Yeah. It's, it must be. T- I'm going to say they did fine. I, I think they did I fine. Did I will fine. say I had two uh, conversations, people asking me, and they and, and this is what's funny. They all assumed we ran out of questions. Yeah, uh, I had people that just said, what happened? Yeah. Is it over? Is it over? Yeah. That's funny. I've had Did zero conversations I, about it. I have. And and then we I got, have, and, and somebody uh, anonymously put on to our I question saw the form. Question. They were like, where's the podcast? So they missed us, whoever that was. Yes. Um, so it's good to know that you're missed. It do, is good. Do to we know. need to tell them there were lost, uh, there are lost, lost episodes, episodes of the podcast. There are, that shall never see the light of day. Uh-uh, they yeah. got garbled in digital space. So that's what happened, is we filmed three episodes uh, before I had a vacation, then Jason had a vacation in our normal filming, so we knew we were going to be missing some. We filmed three, and then we found out afterwards that recording was damaged, it was corrupted, we couldn't use it, so... Corrupted. That sounds we, so it does. evil. That yeah, but that is what happened. The files, they were corrupted. Mm-hmm. So uh, we don't know what happened. We're hoping these do not get corrupted. Yes. And uh, then we'll be able to resume our normal schedule. We will. So. And, and the good news is, in that hiatus, uh, we have gotten a backlog of questions. That's so right. We're gonna, I think people were worried. They were. They were afraid that, you know, so they wanted to help us out. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Do redo those three that were corrupted. Correct. That we lost. Uh, so that'll be the next three weeks. Those three questions that we uh, that we had next, and then we'll get to uh, the backlog, which yeah. I haven't looked at all of those. But there's some yes. interesting things. I, I'm I'm sure. I've 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 read them as they came in, and I'm excited about all of them. What I want to know is how could you not have looked at them but know they're interesting? I didn't read them in depth, but I see lots of entries uh, on okay. the database because I have it right here on my phone, and I just sort of look. This the difference like, between me and you. I generally would think they're not interesting. Uh-huh. <laughs> I trust our, our audience. Okay. I did read them, but I didn't read them in depth. So oh I can't. Oh my goodness. Re- the way you have to read it is terrible. No. That okay. Like, I thought. I, 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 never mind. Ed's, Ed's distracted. I am distracted. But see, we have uh, 10 entries into our uh, log there. Wow. So, yeah. So we're going to get to those. All of them very interesting. They are. And just hang on, but we're going to get to them one at a time. So I agree. without further ado, Let's do it. Do it. All right. Here's the first question. I've heard you talk about your thoughts on, quote, everything happens for a reason. But what about, quote, if it's meant to be, it will be. I'm sure there are some things that God makes happen regardless, but I struggle with this saying. So what I take from this question is that this person has often heard people use phrases like, Everything happens for a reason, and we talked about that on. The we podcast. did an episode. We on did a it. whole I think episode what on that. Referring to. But they would like us to ref- to respond to another phrase that's very similar that people will just say, "Well, if it's meant to be, it will be." Meaning, it hasn't happened. I want it to happen, and if it's meant to be, it'll be. Yeah, kind of like you know, I'm I'm laying in that- the middle of the road. <laughs> there might be cars come along. If it's meant for me not to be run over, I won't be run over. Yeah. Wow. That's that's sort of the opposite that I was thinking, but yeah, well, because nobody puts it in that term. Of course, because nobody's going to lay down in the middle of the road and say, "If God doesn't want yeah. me to get killed, he, the, the, nobody will run over me." Hmm. But if the statement is true, it ought to work both ways. That's what I think. That's what I think. Nobody. I always say for those kind of things, nobody parents this way. Nobody says, "I'd like my kid to turn out really responsible hmm. and to be, you know, just a warm, mature adult." Mm-hmm. So. If it's meant to be, it'll be. Do Everybody, you, parents, trying to make that happen. Do you think that people say that phrase when they reach a point where they can't do anything about something and they just kind of go, well, since I've reached the end of what I have the ability to do, mm-hmm. if it's a, meant to be, God will make it happen. And they just mm-hmm. sort of throw it to God at that point. It's like, yeah. I'm done. I have, I have exhausted all resources and all energy. So, okay, God, there you go. Mm-hmm. Which I think, which it, if a, that's what you do, that I think that's okay. Well, I'm I, I'm not saying it's not okay. I'm not saying it's how we're called to live. Yeah. Oh, with 
oh no, about general kind of stuff. Yeah, because but I, there's so much of my life. So I took the original parameter. You said, if I've done everything I can do and there's nothing more I can do, mm -hmm. then I turn it over to God. I think that's okay. I do, but my point is, why didn't you do that in the first place? No, no. I just mean, I do think there are situations in life. Mm -hmm. So I try to have influence with a particular person. Yeah. I try to talk to their person I care about, mm -hmm. a child. Let's put it in terms of a child. Mm -hmm. They're of an age where they can make their own decision. I can't do much more than have influence. Sure. So I, I release mm -hmm. that to God. Yes. I will continue to try to do what influence I can, but there's not much I can do between that person and God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I guess on the flip side of that, if your approach is, well, if it'll be, it'll be, and then I don't really, and that relieves me of the responsibility to do anything, that would not be okay. No, I still have to do what I can do. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a trying to understand. If I can roll out of the road, I should roll out of the road. <laughs> <All right>. Sure. <laughs> <Good analogy. laughs> I think I think it's a matter of trying to understand the nature of what interactive life with God is. That's yes. the term we're using a lot these days. Interactive life with God. Uh, that God made me to have to cooperate <laughs> life with him. And I see people end up and I'll say I've been in probably both sides of the camp of this because I think I think it's natural for the pendulum to swing mm. both ways until you finally and I'm not saying I've arrived at what it is. I'm saying I think I'm not on either end of this particular pendulum anymore, mm -hmm. and hopefully more towards maybe what God wants. But I think there's one version of it, which is the, let's say this version they've said of whatever will be, will be. It's mm -hmm. just the throw everything to God. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do anything, you know, even to the level of like Christian scientist, you know, God, I won't even go to the doctor. I'm not going to do any mm -hmm. of this because yeah. God's, if God wants me healed, God's going to heal me, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Or the famous, uh, you know, little folk parable everyone has yeah. of the person who's is lost at sea and they pray for God to rescue him and he sends a boat and a helicopter and all those things yes. and you don't ever take what God gave you, right? So there's, that's one, in, that's what it means to cooperate is God has to give me a sign and physically come lift me up to get it. Mm -hmm. There's another sign, which is God has given me all the precepts in the Bible. Mm. It's, it's a form of what I think I called in one of our <laughs> most recent on mission meetings, which is practical atheism, yep. which is, all that Jesus really had was teaching mm -hmm. and yeah. ideas. And if I have the wisdom of Jesus, if Jesus is just a really good teacher and I apply his life principles, my life will be better. I'm really the one doing it, though. Mm -hmm. Jesus just knew the secret. I'm the one that's doing it. I think I grew up living on that side of it. Mm -hmm. I should you read a proverb a day, live in, the, live in the wisdom of God, just do all that. But, and prayer is really what you, it's prayer is the thing you say you do for people because you don't really want to do anything else. Yeah. That was kind of the version I grew up in. Mm -hmm. Then I think when I thought, oh, I'm supposed to live in the will of God and only do what he tells me to do, I swing for a while to the other side of the pendulum of, well, I need to just only do stuff that I think God is leading me in the moment to do. I think both of those are really extreme versions of what we think interactive life with God is. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think what God is more looking for is cooperation, which is God is active and at work and he's doing stuff, right? He's active in the world. He's doing stuff. And he has given me wisdom and precepts and just wise ways to live. Jesus taught. There's Proverbs. There's just the story of the Bible that gives me some not to do's and to do's that are wise. If I live my life on those principles, while seeking where God is, those principles help point me in the direction of where he might be. Then I might be able to do what he's going to do. But I think this version over here of whatever will be will be is a version of saying, uh, I'm just going to sit and if God wants to come get me, God can come get me, but I ain't doing anything else. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a full version of what interactive life with God is. Yeah. But I do understand how people get there because I think I've been there at different points in my life. And I think it's also an extreme... And we talked about this a little bit on the podcast of, of that idea of everything's predetermined. Right. That God's going to do what God's going to do, and it doesn't really matter what I do anyway. So I just sort of place all the responsibility onto Him mm -hmm. and just sit back and wait. Right. Yes. Okay. And I think there's a, I think even in that, so that gets to the idea of, right, I know people, and I don't, I don't subscribe, have ever really 
subscribe to that version of theology. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say what they believe, but I know they often talk about the sovereign will of God. Exactly. That God is sovereign, meaning he's over, he's in control of everything. So everything that happens, mm -hmm. God is somehow determining it's going to happen. Good and bad. Yeah. God either is actively allowing it to happen and saying, I, I don't think they would say God caused genocide, but I think they would say God allowed the genocide to happen for a reason for his glory. Mm -hmm. Now, there might be some that would go to that extreme. Yeah. Or God is actively doing something. You know, God put me in the car crash to wake me up and to make me come alive to whatever his thing is. So I, I don't want to get into that, but I think the idea of saying God does have a will, mm -hmm. uh, and God does have something he wants to happen in the world, but for me to be active in his will does not mean he is whispering in my ear every step I'm supposed to take. Yeah. And I'm waiting until he tells the next step and I don't. Right. It's the example of if I tell, and I think I've used this either on the podcast or somewhere else, if I tell my daughters, when my daughters are in the backyard playing and they know they're not allowed to go past this boundary marker, whatever they do, I don't prescribe everything they do in the backyard. But as long as they're playing in the backyard, and they're being kind to their sisters, and, they're, and they've made a game that's fair for everyone, they're still within my will, though I did not tell them, now it's time for hide and seek. Now, it's time. now, when they were really little, I probably had to do a lot of that. A lot of, okay, let's do this activity now. Let's do this, because they needed guidance. But now that they're older, they still are living in my will when they are creatively coming up with their own solutions to things, as long as it's not stepping outside of what I have told them not to do. Yeah, I think... I. I think that, uh, so moving on from the person's question, which I think maybe we've gotten to, to this interactive thing, I think it genuine, I, I guess I'm coming to the place in my life, should have been there a long time ago probably, of seeing that it is genuine interaction. And I think certainly all the precepts in the Bible, if I want to, like you said, see where God is and get myself close enough to where God needs me to be, to be able even to cooperate with him very well. Uh, I need to know those. I need to be willing to yes. line my life up with all of those. Mm -hmm. But even when, <clears throat> even when I'm doing a thing that God has prescribed for everyone to do, God would genuinely want me to be interacting with him about that thing. Mm. Yes. And that's the part that I have often missed. When it's been in areas where it's not specifically prescribed, mm. like you use... Like the, a command in the Bible. Yeah, there's not a yep. command in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like well, if we use the playing in the backyard, I, I used to think God didn't really care what we did in the backyard as long as it was in the backyard. Right. And mm -hmm. we didn't violate any other commands. But because of the nature of unlike you as a human father, you can't literally be with each of your children every moment. Sure. But because God doesn't need a body and he doesn't need a voice to communicate with me, not a literal yeah. human bo yeah. embodied voice, God can be with me and you and Jason all at the same moment, speaking to us in a way that we all can understand. And even on things that are all in the backyard, he may very well have something he would like us to do together. Sure. If we were all willing to listen. Mm -hmm. He may, and then he also may. No, he may he, also not. I, he I, he I, may also enjoy, and I think this is the part I would get to on this specific question of whatever will be, will be. I actually think God ha has given us more creative license than I we think he has. Yeah. In that, similar to my daughters. So my daughters used to play this game in the backyard. If you ever came to my house, there would be, they looked like little pagan w rituals where they would make these little sticks. They'd go to... Not only at your house, here when they came to the church, they yes, would build There'd be things. these things and they would, they'd be tying them together and all these sticks and these little things and they'd play this little game. I still don't know what the game is. Maybe they're playing on sacrifice in one of the other Oh, ones. wow. I don't know. But they're <laughs> playing this little game. That's a game I would have never come up with. Right. I would have never... And, I love the fact that they, with their unique creativity and their own license, they created something. But what I loved most was they were doing it together. Right. They were they were including one another. They were helping one another. 
that's where I think God often exists with us, which is, you know, there's these things in the book of Acts where uh, we're going to talk about, I just read Ed's sermon, which was really good about unity in the church. And there's a part where they say to one, it seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit. And I love the phrasing of that because it almost sounds like the Holy Spirit was like, because they just come up with, so I don't want to get into the specifics, but basically they come to a decision where it kind of looks like the church was just like, I guess these three things are the fine three things. And what it sounds like is the Holy Spirit just kind of like, like a father goes, okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like that's... And what we know for sure is later, some of those things, Paul winds up going, yeah, those, those, that didn't, that didn't apply either. to me anymore. Right. Because probably he had a conversation with the Holy Spirit and goes, yes. yeah, you don't, you don't need to worry about that yeah, anymore. That was good for them. Yeah, that's but right. You're that, good too. That situation was okay, <laughs> but this situation's different. Yeah. And I think that's where I've gotten to, where I think... God is like, and he is with us in every moment. I think he's speaking, but I don't know that he is literally, I'm trying to say this in a way that doesn't sound like it's contradicting because I was going to say directing everything, but I know people who want to, he directs our steps. I don't know that he is literally uh, puppeteering every moment well, of my I, life. If, if Even if I will allow him say, God, you just moved my hands and my body. I, God's like, I'm not really interested in that kind of a relationship. Right. That's right. Where Any more I than have, you are with your children. Right. Yeah. And so I think when it comes to trying, and I'm trying to tie it back to this, whatever will be, will be. I think our original point of, I think God's saying, I want you to work in a situation, whatever the situation, it's a rela- say it's a relational situation. You're trying to help somebody else and you realize there's a limit to what I can do. God isn't just saying, hey, do whatever you can do and I'll take care of the rest. He's saying, I want you to work with me in my likeness. Be be praying the whole time, be thinking through the whole time, but also use your imagination mm-hmm. to imagine what could happen in this person's life, but then always do it within the boundaries of how God operates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that means I'm not going to dominate and say, hey, no, whatever will be, will be. I'm not going to do that. I can make it happen for them. There is a level to which you have to get involved but you also have to live under the 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 knowledge of I can't violate this person's free will. I can't make them make a decision. I have to love and serve them like God would love and serve me. And that may require sometimes that all I can do for the person is pray. But by saying that's all we can do, that's not saying that's not enough. Mm-hmm. Or that that's somehow a backup plan or a fallback. Yes, back. it's not a backup plan. It's not a lesser than thing. Mm-hmm. Well, All like, of it is a tool in my toolbox that God has given me. Sometimes I need to say a kind word to someone mm-hmm. or a convicting word to somebody. And sometimes I can pray for the person. I, I just recently have had conversations with people in my life. And I've, I said to them at the end, I said, I'm going to be praying for you throughout this whole thing. No matter whether you make the decision I would want or not, I'm praying that even if your decision is not the one I would want, God would be active in that decision. That because just because I think I know what's best for you doesn't mean I know what's best for you. That I well, and even if you did know what was best and they make a bad decision, I want and God God does want. He's still at work in their bad decision. Sure. To bring them back to God is at work in all things for those who called according to His purpose. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and and there are no people called according to His purpose that have not made bad decisions. Yes. So God is at work in those two. And yes. that's what you mean by all that. You just yeah, that's want right. God to continue to work that's right. in all those situations, no matter what. And I don't, you know, I guess in the end, we don't really know what the person means when they say what, what yes. it would be. Well, I think but, we've touched on what it could mean yeah, in, in the extremes. Of, yeah. And those are probably not wise. But I think, and what Nathan led us through, the interactive piece. Right, cooperation is what we're yeah. going for, and yeah. so as long as you stay away from, and again, I people say all kinds of things, and I get why you would ask that question because you know people say lots of stuff, <laughs> and it's not often helpful. But um, you know, there are I, very few cliches that are completely true. Well, there and you. I will say also, just this <laughs> is this isn't the question, and it'll just be a quick side note. You also don't have to correct people who use cliches you, you don't, don't agree with. I know sometimes we hear this guy, I get tired of people saying everything happens for a reason. I, we've already said everything happens for a reason is not necessarily a biblical way of viewing it. I also don't have to be constantly going around to people going, see, I don't believe everything That's happens right. for I can just let people say the nonsense they say. So, so in other words, just 
just don't be annoying. Yes, don't yeah. be annoying. It's a, Including you should those mind. of you who like to say cliches to me, don't be annoying. Yes. That's don't, right. Don't say them to yes. me. That's right. Okay. So let's have a full conversation with That's new right. words that you didn't just copy. Yes. <laughs> okay. So next week, we are going to talk about the subject. Uh, let me look ahead because I love to give teasers. Okay? Yes, you do. you do. All right. Somebody wants us to talk a little bit about spending time with Jesus first thing in the morning and mm -hmm. how we do that. When does God actually want us to do that? Mm -hmm. And is that a big deal? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that. What what the what uh, I was told growing up as the old quiet time. Get yourself mm -hmm. a quiet time. Get yourself a quiet time. You got to have a quiet time. Uh, have so. so we're going to talk about quiet time, but we won't be quiet next week. No, we we'll go. talk about it. All right. So <laughs> we're glad to be back. We hope you're glad that we are back. And uh, unless you know Satan decides to corrupt all of these videos, them. we shall continue to produce more podcasts. So keep tuning in. We'll see you next week.